So let's first take a look at hypothesis testing where we're going to test a population mean. And much of this will be very similar to the confidence interval uh, that we developed in a previous module. So there are times that we want to see if a sample that we have matches the general population. So we're looking for, say, take the temperature of a group of students. The average temperature should be 98.6. And obviously, it's going to be slightly off. But we want to test to see if this sample mean is different from the population mean. Another example might be take a salary of a department of 50 people and see if the average salary in the department is the same as the overall salary of the corporation, uh, 2,000 people. And then we want to take a sample of GMAT scores for a given school and see if it matches the population of GMAT scores across the nation. So these are some examples of where we might test a sample mean to a given population mean. So in order to determine if a sample mean is statistically similar to a population mean, we need to really understand what's happening. First is we have to assume that the sample is normally distributed or somewhat close. And let's see why. If we know that there's a population distribution that is normal, with a mean of 98.6, as we can see here on this graph, then any sample that we have should look something like it. And the mean of the sample shouldn't be too far away from the population mean. When we take a sample and we find that our sample looks normal, has a mean of 99.1 with a standard deviation of 1.1, uh, graphing it will look close. Now, we have a statistical measure, the t-test, which will measure how close the sample distribution is to the population distribution and tell us whether they are statistically the same, whether the, statist whether the sample matches the population. So let's see how to do this. So the first thing we need to know is how to set up our hypothesis test. So let's take this example. We conduct a sample of temperatures of students, and the sample has 30 students with an average temperature of 99.1 and a standard deviation of 1.31. We then calculate our t statistic using the formula to the right. And so here we have our t equals x bar, which is our sample mean, minus mu, our population, or what would be our expected population mean, divided by the sample standard deviation, which is divided by the square root of n, the number of observations. So this formula should look familiar because we used this formula when we developed our confidence interval a few modules ago. So what we're going to do first is we're going to put our, the variables that we know. We have our mu zero, which is going to be considered the population mean. So, so you might hear some people say mu naught or mu zero or just mu, and that would refer to the population mean. And this would be 98.6. So this is what we're testing against. X bar is our sample mean, which is 99.1. And this is what we got as our average from the sample. Our standard deviation from that sample was 1.31 and the number of observations that we have is 30. So all of this information is either given to you or you calculated from the sample that you're given. What we're going to do is we're going to create our hypothesis test. And our hypothesis test will always look like this. There's two parts to it. We have an H0, which again is our null hypothesis. And this is what the current belief is. So in this case, our belief is, is that x bar is equal to 98.6. And then we have the alternative hypothesis, which is what we're testing for. And we're basically saying that the alternative hypothesis is that the sample mean is not equal to 98.6. Now, statistically speaking, uh, there are there's going to be some thresholds. So it could be 98.61, and that might be the same as 98.6, or 98.54, and that might be the same. And again, that has to do with our confidence level and ultimately the standard deviation. The, the T statistic is actually going to handle that for us. So even though our sample here clearly looks different, 99.1 against the 98.6, is it really that far off or is it just a small random probability that your sample mean was just slightly off from the true mean of 98.6? And that's ultimately what we're looking for. So again, we have our two pieces to the hypothesis test. In all cases, it will be an H0, an H0 or a null hypothesis, as well as an alternative hypothesis, HA. The H0 is that x bar is 98.6, as it should be, and the HA is equal to uh, x bar not equal to 98.6. So when we plug in our numbers for the calculation, we have t equals 99.1, which was our sample mean, minus 98.6, which should be our expected population mean, divided by 1.31, which is divided by the square root of 30. And this gives us a value of 2.07. 
What we'll do is we will put into Excel, now remember, because this is a t-statistic, we're going to be using the t-distribution, t.dist.2t, because this is a two-tail distribution, because again, the equal sign, we're looking for our things on the left or on the right of the, of, uh, the mean, is going to be, uh, so that's going to give us a two-tail distribution. We put in our 2.07 from the t-statistic, and 29 refers to the degrees of freedom. Recall that the degrees of freedom is equal to n minus 1, the number of observations minus 1. When we do that, we get a t-statistic of 0 0.0476. So how we test this is this. Since our, our p-value, which is what it's giving us, is 0 0.0476, and it's less than our 0.05 confidence interval, we can reject H0, or the null hypothesis, and state that the sample mean is different from the population mean. It's important to know that when we do these tests, we're never accepting the alternative hypothesis. We will only do one of two things. Either we will reject, or we will not reject the null hypothesis. So in this case, because the p-value that we obtained from the Excel function, which is 0 0.0476, is less than 0 0.05, we can reject the null hypothesis and state that the sample mean is different from the population mean. So this sample was somewhat different than the population. Now that we've seen how to do a two-tail test and set up the hypothesis, we're going to show how to do a one-tail test. But before we do that, let's try and understand what a one-tail test means. Now, how we determine whether or not we have a right tail or a left tail test is probably easier seen if we use this graph. Here we have a standard normal distribution. And what we're focused on is whether we're going to be on the left side, referenced in orange, or the right side, focused in red. Now, the calculation of the t-statistic will be the same, but ultimately what we're comparing it to or how to obtain the p-value, that's what's going to change. So remember in this normal distribution that red tail is uh, plus five percent that's the top five percent and the bottom tail in orange is the lower five percent but remember that our t value function in excel we only have either the 2t function the t.dist.2t function or we have the t.dist.rt function there is no lt function but we can calculate what the left tail would be uh, by a simple calculation using the RT function. So let's see how we do that. We want to see exactly how to determine whether or not we're going to have a right tail test or a left tail test. And the easiest way to do that is to let's look at the alternative hypothesis. If the alternative hypothesis is a greater than sign or greater than or equal to, we're going to be focused on the right tail. Now let's understand why that's happening. What we're ultimately looking for is the, if we were, if our hypothesis test was uh, the mean or the area of the curve that's greater than 95%, we would be focused on the right tail. And if we were looking for something that was, say, less than uh, 5%, we would be focused on the left tail. So you'll notice if we're looking for the probability of the curve is greater than 95% or less than 5%, we can match that to the alternative hypothesis there. In this case, the alternative hypothesis says that the sample mean is greater than 98.6. So in that case, we're going to be focused on the right tail test. And in Excel, we'll do that with the t.dist.rt, given some value and a degrees of freedom. And that will give us the p-value that we can compare against. On the left tail side, we're going to have where we'll look at the alternative hypothesis, if it's a less than sign, we're going to be using a left tail test. And in order to calculate the left tail test, we're going to do 1 minus the t distribution.rt, t.dist.rt, with the x value as the t statistic, with the appropriate degrees of freedom. So our right tail test and our left tail test can be determined by the alternative hypothesis direction. And again, these could be either greater than, greater than or equal to for a right tail test, less than, less than or equal to for a left tail test. And then we use the appropriate function in Excel. So here we have the example. 
Using the same data and previous calculations, the only thing that we've done is we've altered the hypothesis test. You'll notice here in the middle that we have the X bar less than or equal to 98.6, and we're analyzing to see if that sample mean is actually greater than 98.6. So the greater than sign means we're going to have a right tail, and we calculate our T statistic as we had before uh, in the same manner. We end up with 2.07. And we use our Excel uh, function, t.dist.rt, 2.07 with 29 degrees of freedom. And we end up with a p-value of 0.023. Since 0.023 is less than 0.05, we can reject the null hypothesis, which said that the sample mean was less than 98.6. And we can therefore state that the sample mean is not less than or equal to 98.6, that it is greater than 98.6. Now, for a left tail hypothesis test, as you could see here in the middle, we have our null hypothesis that X bar is greater than or equal to 98.6, and our alternative hypothesis, X bar is less than 98.6. So that less than sign there means we're going to have a left tail. We calculate our T statistic in the same way we had before. It doesn't change, and we end up with 2.07. But this time, we're going to have 1 minus the T distribution dot RT, T dist dot RT, 2.07 with 29 degrees of freedom, and we will end up with a value of 0.977. Now remember that since 0.977 is greater than 0.05, we cannot reject the null hypothesis, and therefore we cannot state that the sample mean is not less than the population mean. It, it is definitely the null hypothesis that is stating that it is greater than or equal to 98.6.